are you? My name is Heather and today we are going to paint this lovely jellyfish underwater scene. We're going to be using watercolor and oil pastel and just a little bit of salt to make it come alive. I am so glad that you're here with me today. Let's get started on our project. Okay, first we're going to go over our supplies. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need some clean water in some sort of cup or a bowl. This is called a water well. That's the fancy term for it. I like to use masking tape or washi tape to tape down my watercolor paper. So make sure you have some of that scotch tape, like the clear tape, that won't really work. You have to have some masking tape for it to come off. We need a watercolor brush and some watercolors. We're also today going to be using oil pastels. We're gonna be using two mediums, oil pastel and watercolor. And then you need some thick watercolor paper. This probably won't work if you do it on like copy paper. You need to have something thicker, like a watercolor paper or cardstock. I also like to use a paper towel whenever I'm using watercolor because sometimes I like to dry my brush off on that. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you the steps we're going to take to do our project. Okay, are you ready for me? I'm going to tell you what steps we're taking. First, do you see how these colors are coming out of our watercolor? Yeah, that's because it's oil pastel and the watercolor does not penetrate the oil pastel. So our first step is we're going to draw with our oil pastel our two jellyfish and then some of the background of the water. After that, we're going to take watercolor and we're going to watercolor our jellyfish first. Then for our third step, we're going to watercolor the background or the water of our scene. We're going to be using two watercolor techniques today. We're going to be using wet on wet and wet on dry. I'm going to be explaining what those two techniques are here in a minute, okay? All right, stick around, we're about to jump into the tutorial. Okay, first I'm going to show you what our two techniques are, our wet on wet and wet on dry. Right here, I have a plain sheet of watercolor paper. It's dry, it's not wet. Sometimes watercolor artists will actually wet their entire piece of paper before using it. Isn't that crazy? I'm going to wet my brush a little bit, get some water, and then I'm going to load up some paint on my brush and I'm going to paint my wet paint onto my dry paper. This is called wet on dry. Do you see that? Yeah. I'm just using my wet paint on the dry paper and the paint only goes where my brush touches the paper. It doesn't float around the paper or move. It only goes where my brush touches the paper. Okay? Now I'm going to show you what wet on wet looks like. I'm going to get my brush wet with just clear water. There's a little bit of paint left on my brush. Okay, I just put clear water down onto my paper. Now I'm going to load my brush with another color, which is green. And I'm just going to touch this green to my paper and that green just flows all inside the water. It moves, doesn't it? Okay, let me pick up another color. I'm gonna pick up purple and I can touch that purple into the same water and it creates a lot of movement in our paint, kind of like water, right? So that's the technique we're going to use for our water in our jellyfish scene. Okay, let's get started. So we had wet on wet right here. Excuse me, I will lift it up. Wet on wet and then a wet on dry. Okay, we're gonna be using both of those techniques today. Okay, before we get started, I'm gonna clean my brush off, put it over here, and make sure my paper is in frame here. And I'm going to tape down the sides of my paper. The reason why we tape down our paper is because this paper, when we put a lot of water on it, because we are going to with our watercolors, it will start to curl up on us. And whenever it curls up on us, 
the paint goes places where maybe we don't want the paint to go. So this helps keep our paint where we want it and keep the paper flat. And I usually always leave this tape down until my composition is good and dry. Okay, so we're all taped down. Now we're going to draw our jellyfish. I'm gonna take two colors of my oil pastels. I think I'm going to take, hmm, I think I'm gonna do a orange and a pink. Okay, so choose two colors of pastels that you feel like you would like to use. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw one jellyfish with one color, draw another jellyfish with another color, and then we're gonna paint them opposite colors. I will show you what I mean. Okay, to draw our first jellyfish, make sure I'm in my camera view, we're gonna draw kind of an, a rainbow like that. And then I'm going to connect the bottom of my rainbow with some squiggly lines. And we're gonna be drawing the bell of our jellyfish first. That's that top section. I like to put kind of a little flower looking thing here. Then I usually come down and put just a couple of lines. I don't have to be super detail oriented here. Now, I'm gonna draw, these are my favorite parts of the jellyfish. These squiggly tentacles. They actually have a name. Um, maybe I'll put them in the comments here. I like to make these a little bit thicker too because they are, they're really thick and luscious, kind of fun. Okay, now we're gonna take these and we're gonna take some more tentacles and we're going to bring them down like this. So we have two different types of tentacles, these skinny ones and then these fat swirly ones. All right, so I have my first jellyfish drawn. Now I'm going to draw my second jellyfish. Come over here, draw my rainbow, squiggly line, draw the tops, draw some lines down, and then some squigglies. Remember I like to make these nice and fat. They almost look like seaweed. Have you been to an aquarium where you've seen a jellyfish? I have. Or have you actually been to the ocean and seen them on the uh, beach? I have too. They're always more fun to see in the aquarium, aren't they? Okay, now we have both of our jellyfish drawn. We're going to draw the details of our water behind or in the background, okay? So I'm gonna take out some blues. I have a dark blue, kind of a medium blue, and a light blue. And then I'm gonna take some white too, because I'm gonna wanna draw some white. For my blues, as you can see, I broke one of my oil pastels. Sometimes these are kind of fragile, but they're like crayons. You can take the, um, wrappers off and and um, use them that way. I'm gonna draw some kind of swirls because water is in motion, isn't it? So I wanna make sure that a lot of this background looks like it is in motion. I'm gonna do that and then I might take some and do some of these little waves around my jellyfish. Oh, it's looking so good, guys. I know yours is looking good, too. Yeah, we want to make sure this water looks like it's flowing. Awesome. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to take my white and I'm gonna use my white and draw some circles, like some bubbles. Maybe these are some bubbles coming up from the fish below, because I don't think jellyfish actually breathe 
hair. But, you know, dolphins do. And whales do. Maybe there's some scuba divers down there in your ocean scene. Who knows? And I'm just putting some circles wherever I feel led to do so. Kind of add that. Ah, it's looking good. Okay, I think we are done with our oil pastels. Now it is time for us to watercolor. Okay, all right. First we're going to watercolor our uh, jellyfish. And for us to do that, we're going to get our brush wet. Let me move that over, move this over. And I'm going to use pink where I painted my orange jellyfish and I'm going to use orange where I painted my pink jellyfish. Now, maybe you did purple and green. You can flip flop those and you can paint purple on top of the green or green on top of the purple and honestly it doesn't matter you can do whatever your heart desires now from our lesson a minute ago what am I doing am I painting wet on wet or am I painting wet on dry what do you think if you guessed wet on dry you were right I am, I'm painting wet on dry. And I am painting the inside of the bell. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm just kind of outlining the tentacles and such, okay? You don't have to be super precise about it. I'm being pretty loose. Okay, now it's time for me to paint the next one. I'm gonna paint that one orange. I don't know, let me see if I like this. I think I'm gonna go with a lighter orange over here. That orange was a little dark for me. Yes, I like this one better. It looks more like my oil pastel. Have you guys used oil pastels before? They kind of remind me of crayons, don't they? Just a little bit. Um, but just have a softer texture, don't they? Yeah. Um, did you know oil pastels were actually invented in Japan? And they were invented for kids. They were invented so kids, they wanted kids to have um, something that was bright and colorful because a lot of Japanese art is done with ink, black ink. And so I thought that was kind of a cool, whenever I was researching it, I thought that was kind of a cool fact. So, okay. We have painted our pink jellyfish and our orange jellyfish. Now it's time for us to jump into the ocean. We're gonna get our brush wet and we're going to start by using our wet on wet technique. And we're going to wet our paper with some water. Try not to touch that pink jellyfish, but if you do, that's okay. The blue will cover it up a little bit. And then we're gonna take our blue we're gonna be using cool colors for this. We're gonna be using some blues and some greens. And we're just going to enjoy that ocean feel. Have you been to the ocean before? I have and sometimes I have been where the water is not blue, it is green. I've also been places where the water is not green or blue, it's brown, but you never know. It's all fun to swim in, isn't it? Okay, I'm just gonna be adding water first. And whenever you're painting, you wanna use your, your brush on its side and not the tip of it. You wanna use the side of your brush because that gives your um, paint 
more area to move around. If you're just using the tip of your brush, you're not giving your brush very much room to apply the paint. Ugh, oh, it looks so good. And that, can you see how that oil pastel is just resisting? That's called a resist. That oil pastel is resisting the watercolor, causing it to really pop off the page, isn't it? Yes, looks awesome. I am so excited this is looking so good I bet yours at home is looking so good too and I just have to say if you need extra time please pause this video don't feel like you need to keep up with me because listen I am a fast painter I didn't know that about myself but now I do um, after I started teaching art classes I didn't realize how fast fast I had become Whenever you do something a lot, you just become fast at it. So, okay, I'm still applying some water. And then I'm gonna come up here, get my blue, and apply some blue. Apply some green. And if you have a little bit of bleeding, that's okay. So good, guys. And I'm gonna come in here and where my tentacles kind of I'm gonna fill that in with some wet on dry because I don't want the um, water to seep in there. Yeah, it looks good. The best aquarium for jellyfish in the entire world is actually just right by where I live in Baltimore. I live in DC, but Baltimore is not too far away. And I have been there and they have some really cool jellyfish. Some of their jellyfish even glow in the dark. Maybe, maybe you have been there too. I think it's called the National Aquarium. Okay, we are almost done here. It's great. some of this extra. Now, I'm going to show you an, a trick. If you want, you do not have to do this. But, if you want to, you can take some salt here. This is just regular table salt and you can kind of sprinkle it where your paint is still wet and it will make a really cool effect as it dries. There we go. That's all I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to come back and I'm gonna peel off all this tape and show you our final product. It's going to look so cool. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I my composition is dry. Now I'm taking a paper towel and I'm just kind of rubbing off all that um, salt that I had applied before. Now we're going to take the tape off and I promise you it's going to look so good. I can't wait for you to see. Okay, that salt really gave it another layer of texture, which I love. Okay, there's one. Oh, just looks so clean and nice with that layer of tape around it. My daughter likes to keep all this tape and make a tape ball with it. 
I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm just telling you what she likes to do. So, <gasps> okay, oh, you all, it looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you. Ta-da, there are my jellyfish. My pink one and my orange one. I'm gonna show you my one from before too, so you can see. They both look a little different. They look really awesome. Oh my goodness. What an awesome project we did today. Thank you so much for sharing this space with me, for being creative. Today we worked with watercolors, we worked with oil pastels, we learned two watercolor techniques, wet on wet and wet on dry, and we painted some pretty awesome jellyfish, didn't we? All right, that's it for today and I can't wait to meet you right back here next time.